Let's set up object tracking for GLBP between R3 and R4. The link we want to track is the link directly between R3 and R4. That's not part of the 10143.0 slash 24 network. No, no, that other link between them. See, right now, R4 is going to be the default gateway for a certain number of clients within the 10143.0 slash 24 network. If the link between R3 and R4 fails, that traffic still goes to R4, but R4 can no longer send traffic to VLAN 10 or 20 or the DHCP server or even the servers in VLAN 200 for those clients, which means their traffic gets dropped because R4 can't reach them. So what we need to do is we need to set up object tracking so R4 keeps an eye on the status of that link. If that link fails, then R3 can become the AVF for R4's MAC address, and then all the traffic from the clients in 10.143.0 goes towards R3, and then they can still reach all of the other networks that we have here. So let's go to R4, and the first thing we're going to do is set up a tracking object for a particular interface. Do show IP interface brief. And what is the interface we want to track? It is going to be gigabit Ethernet 2 slash 0. That's the connection between R3 and R4. So let's set up a tracking object. So we're going to track what? In this case, we're going to track an object called what? 43. That's what we're going to track. And it's going to be an interface. But notice we can track an IP protocol. We can track a, a list of objects as well. So if we wanted to track a, a route on R4, for example, the routes of VLAN 10 and 20 and VLAN 100 and 200, if we wanted to track those routes, we could do that. And if for some reason those routes disappear to the routing table, then we could decrement our weight value in this case. So it's not just about interfaces. We can do routes as well and, and, other, and other objects. So track interface, in this case we said it was gigabit Ethernet, 2 slash 0, and we want to track the line protocol. So is it up or is it down? If it's down, then we have a problem. If it's up, then no problem exists at all. So we'll exit out of that, and then what we'll do is we'll go to interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 of R4, and we will type in GLBP, and this is group 43, and we want to set waiting. So waiting in this case, is the process that we will be utilizing for this object tracking. So, does anybody know the default weight value? It's 100. If we don't specify a weight value here, it will use 100. If we want to change our weight value, we can. I don't have a reason to change it right now, so we'll leave it as is. But I'll punch in 100 anyways, just so you can see the full command. So that's the initial weight value. Now we need to specify a lower value. What is our lower value going to be? I'm going to type in lower. 1 to 99. So it's already realizing, all right, you have an initial weight value of 100. So the values you can use are from 1 to 99. So let's say in this case that if we drop below 80, we no longer can be the AVF. What about the upper? What about the upper weighting in this case? Well, I am not allowed to become the AVF until I reach let's say 100 again. So I have to get back my entire waiting before I can successfully forward traffic again for that particular MAC address. All right. Now what do we need to do? We need to set up the tracking object. So GLBP 43 track. Oops, waiting, track. What are we going to track? We're tracking that object we created a while ago. Do you remember what object that was? 
we called it object number 43 for gigabit ethernet 2 slash 0. So let's put in 43 here, just so it happens to be the same as our group number. And we're going to decrement the priority by how much? Well, our current priority is not priority. Pardon me. Whoa, whoa. Decrement our weighting. Decrement the weight value. Well, the weight value we specified was 100. And we said our lower was 80. So I need to come up with a value that makes sure that we get below 80 in this case if that link fails, which is related to gigabit ethernet 2 slash 0 on R4. So 21 would be perfectly fine. But let's use a value of 30. If you don't specify a decrement value, it defaults to 10. Let's hit enter. So, so far, so good. Let's type in show GLBP. And we'll see here from our output that weighting is 100, configured is 100, our thresholds are lower 80, upper 100, and we are tracking object 43. If object 43 goes down, decrement our weight by 100. Show track. Our tracking object indicates that gigabit 2 slash 0 is up. So as long as this is up, we don't have to decrement our value. You can see it's tracked right here by GLBP, group number 43. Interface, gigabit Ethernet 2 slash 0. Let's shut it down. See what happens. Ooh, look at this. What does it state? It says... Our tracking object has gone down. Our tracking object has gone down. So if we look at the output of do, show, track, we can see that line protocol is down. And it's because we administratively disabled that interface. Let's look at the output of show GLBP. Well, there you go. Look at that. We were originally active for the MAC address associated with AVF2. Now we're listening. We can no longer forward because our priority is too low. And we'll see that in this output right here. Waiting has been dropped to 70. Originally, we were configured with 100. So now we're below our lower threshold of 80, which means we can no longer forward for the MAC address we were forwarding for originally, which according to the syslog message was number two. So if we look down below here, it says forwarder number two. We're in the state of listen now. We're in the state of listen. So if we go to R3, we'll see from the syslog message that for AVF2, we are now active. So we successfully accomplished our goal. R3 is now forwarding for both the MAC address of AVF1 and AVF2. Why? Because the link between R3 and R4 is down. And we want to make sure that all the clients in 10.143.0/24 can still reach the file servers in VLAN 20, the DNS servers, the DHCP server in VLAN 100, and so on and so forth. So we successfully made sure that they could still reach all those devices by making sure R3 took over the AVF role for our 4s MAC address when that link went down between R3 and R4. Preemption is enabled by default for this AVF process. So as soon as we type in no shutdown here and re-enable that interface, we will see that the tracking object goes up. And since the tracking object is up, our priority goes back up and we take over the role as the AVF for that MAC address. So we should see that syslog message appear here shortly. Let's go to R3 and see if it already relinquished that role. Nope, it hasn't done that either. So let's give it a little bit of time to cook. And we should see here very, very shortly that R4 will take over. Now you may be thinking, geez, these timers are rather long. Yes, they are. So it's up to you to fine tune those timers to make sure that you have the most appropriate convergence times for your environment. So there we go. Here we see group 43. We now are the AVF 
for the MAC address associated with AVF2. Again, we went back to the active state. 